Ladies and gentlemen, it is with self-evident fanfare that I present to you MIDI synth sounds from Atari. Now, one of the main reasons I bought an ST back in the day was that it had MIDI ports. And at the time, I was keyboard obsessed. Now, if you don't have a real ST and a synth with physical MIDI ports, what are your options? Now, if you know this channel at all, you know that the answer to this question is usually emulation. Now, as a Mac user, Atari is the ST emulator of choice, so that gets that part sorted out. So today I'm going to look at what our options are for emulating synths and keyboards. There are several different software synths that can work with Atari. The most notable are Timidity and Fluid Synth. I opted for Fluid Synth for ease of use and quality of sound. And here I am installing it using the Homebrew Package Manager using Brew Install Fluid Synth. Out of the box, software synths like Fluid Synth don't generate sounds. To do this, they require a sound font. Now, sound fonts are collections of samples, and they're called fonts because they act in a similar manner to text fonts. With text, you have the representation of the words to be displayed on the screen, encoded in, say, ASCII or Unicode. When you set the font for display, the appearance changes, but the underlying text is the same. Software synths use sound fonts in a similar manner. The underlying representation is a stream of MIDI instructions and notes, and the synth uses the sound font to render those instructions into sounds. Now, while I've been talking about sound fonts, I've also been downloading two fonts to demo the process, and these are the Arcano and the Fluid GM sound fonts. Both of these are GM or general MIDI sets. Now, MIDI was a protocol that specified the messages for note on, note off, program or voice selection, and much, much more. What MIDI didn't specify and what general MIDI does was what instrument was associated with what program number and things like the minimum polyphony needed to be supported by a synth to be GM compatible. And that's 24 notes, by the way. And 24 notes back when general MIDI was released was a lot of notes. I mean, I think at the time I had a TX81Z and it was eight note polyphonic and a DX7, which was 16 note polyphonic. And those, like the DX7, cost a thousand quid. General MIDI allowed musicians and game designers to ship MIDI files and know that when playing a note on, say, program one, it will sound as a grand piano and playing a note on program 74 will play it as a flute. So the granddaddy of all standalone GM synths was the Roland MT32. Look them up on eBay. They go for nuts amount of money these days. Our sound fonts don't sample single instruments like an MT32. They gather together the author's favorite sounds from a broad range of traditional and modern synths. There are, of course, pure MT32 sound fonts that are available if you want to have the full Monty retro experience. Now, before we get into setting Atari up to use Fluid Synth, let's test it and have a quick comparison of the two sound fonts. To play a MIDI file using Fluid Synth, the syntax is Fluid Synth, then the path to the sound font and the path to the MIDI file. Now, if you see on screen here, I've created two aliases in my ZSHRC, uh, Fluid-A, which has the Arachno font, and one for the Fluid GM font, which is Fluid-F because the paths contain spaces and are a pain to type, even with autocomplete. So here's Arachno playing a piece. And next, Fluid. Now, what's best is totally subjective for music. Personally, I think the Fluid font is the most realistic, but for retro gaming, perhaps Arcano is slightly better. I don't know. But for this video, we're going to stick to the Fluid GM font. As an aside, if you try this on a Mac and no sound is output, I discuss the likely causes of this slightly later in the video. So let's launch Fluid without a MIDI file and let it wait for MIDI instructions from Atari. So configuring Atari to use Fluid Synth is relatively easy. We're going to run Hitari and early in the startup process, I'm going to hit F12 to get into the settings. We're going to go to devices and we're going to make sure that enable MIDI emulation is checked. 
Then we're going to go to the output selector, press the right button until Fluid Synth hoves into view. The entry shows Fluid Synth and the port it is listening on. Since the port is generated dynamically at startup, the number in brackets won't always necessarily be the same each time, and that can have an effect. Once Fluid Synth is selected, we can go back to the main menu, press OK, continue to boot. Now I've installed a MIDI sequencer called Sweet 16. It's a demo. Once into Geneva and near desk, we can run it. We're going to load a demo song and voila. That sounds good, doesn't it? Now we have a couple of caveats to address here. The first one is the port I mentioned earlier. Since that changes potentially every time you run Fluid Synth, saving the configuration doesn't mean that at the next start, Atari will pick up your Fluid Synth device again, because if the port name has changed, the name of the device will not match the one in the config file, so it won't work. So that's why MIDI was enabled in my config, but no output was present. Now you can start Fluid Synth with the minus P flag and specify a fixed port name. And since that will be the same every time you run it, if you configure Hatari to use that and save it, then it will work the next time in. But the second issue is there is a bug in Hatari in the current Mac version 2.4.1. So let's see what happens if you enter the devices page a second time and quit that page. And yep, it crashes. Now, while that's a pain, I've verified that the latest development version of Atari, which is, I think, 2.5, has addressed this issue. So until that comes out, we're really just going to have to be a bit careful. Let's talk about keyboard input, shall we? I use MIDI keys. Getting an emulated keyboard input from MIDI keys on a Mac into Atari is not quite as simple as selecting MIDI keys as the input under the MIDI settings on the devices page. Atari detects it, but it doesn't work. To get it to work, we need to talk about how Macs are configured for MIDI. So let's open the Audio MIDI Setup app. Now we want the MIDI Studio, and if that's not visible, let's go to Window, Show MIDI Studio. Now what you're going to see on this screen is almost certainly going to be different to this, right? But what will be present is the IAC driver, the Inter Application Communications driver. This driver allows you to create a series of buses that applications can attach to. And in our case, we're going to be attaching our MIDI keys app to one end of the bus and Hatari to the other. Now this driver needs to be enabled for keyboard input and sound output. And I said at the beginning of the episode that if no sound comes out of fluid synth, there's a common cause for that. And that is that the IAC driver is disabled. So to enable it, double click the driver, check the enabled checkbox, then close the dialog. Now we can go into MIDI keys and set its destination to be the IAC driver, then load Hatari and set the IAC driver as the input for MIDI. Now note MIDI keys does appear in the list, but it won't work. We need the IAC driver. Let's run an arpeggiator. So let's run an arpeggiator and we can arpeggiate a couple of chords. Nice, works. However, it needs to be said that controlling an ST via an emulated keyboard is an option of last resort. You have to run Hatari in window mode. There's mouse capture annoyances and it's just not practical. So usually I just run with a physical keyboard and a soft synth. Attaching physical synths and keyboard to Atari is just as easy as virtual ones. And if you're interested in a video on that, let me know in the comments and I'll do an episode on it. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.